Do you ever feel like you're spending too much time changing your design? I came up in Rhino, and while it's wonderful for quick concept modeling, something simple like changing a fillet size can be brutal. There are two ways to model in Fusion 360, parametric and direct modeling. If you didn't know this, you're most likely already using the parametric modeling method. So why should you care about parameters? Well, it can help you make quick changes, like fixing that fillet that Rhino failed at. You won't have to find that sketch that has that dimension. And it's easy to revise CAD without re needing to reset up all your CAM. Just regenerate it. Here's a simple, useful model we made. With a CNC router and a drag knife, you can quickly create your own custom boxes. This model will generate a box for whatever size we want. Using the sheet metal tools, the beauty of this parametric design will stream the model right into a flat pack output for cutting. Here's a shot of our friend, Jonathan, of Steric Design using a Donek drag knife, which could be used to cut out corrugated cardboard. He kindly let us use his video. Give them a follow on Instagram, link below. I think it's helpful to see how other people use a tool, so we'll go through a few examples and then do a walkthrough on how to set up a non-breaking, fun to use parametric model. Chris designed this torsion box workbench to expand his parametric modeling skills. It has some pretty good flexibility for not having any fancy parameters like max, min, floor, or ceiling. You can see we can quickly change the height, length, width, and overhang. This is mostly because Chris went through and starred the important features that would be easy to change and so those rise to the top. He also did a really good job of documenting what you should and shouldn't change over on the right in the comments, which is important so that in the future, you or somebody else doesn't have to hunt through and essentially break the model until you find what's the correct thing to change. Here's a really fancy one. I'd like to say I know exactly how it works, but yeah. Hobbyist maker on YouTube, card here, made the super flexible finger jointed tray. You can edit nearly everything about it and it seemingly never breaks. Click the card to their YouTube or our post below to get the Fusion model to try for yourself. It's pretty fun and really helpful to learn from. One last example. This is a bed frame I designed and made for my house. It's really quite simple, but I wanted to be able to make some simple drawings as well as cam from the design. Parameters are just a way of life for me now. Even if I don't think I'm gonna use them, I still put them into the design. Because while making the bed, if I had realized there was a mistake or disliked the angle of the legs, I could easily change a parameter in the design file and my cam and drawings would quickly update. Using symmetry and making clean sketches are the best tips for successful parametric models. We'll dig into best practices next. Let's get into how to actually do parametric design and fusion. So what do we use parameters for? Stock dimensions like material thickness, placeholders for final measurements, specifying patterns, standard tolerances, and if-then style optimizations. <laughs> Did you actually think I was going to continue with that slideshow? Anyway, you're probably fully intimidated at this point, right? Well, don't worry, we'll break it down and you can follow along. Let's go over the basics. Knowing how to start well is 75% of the battle. An unfortunate reality of a history-based CAD modeler like Fusion is you have to think ahead of yourself to prevent the model from breaking during the future parameter changes. All right, let's actually start on this thing. First off, we're gonna be using parameters a lot, so I recommend creating a keyboard shortcut key. I prefer W. Next, and technically rule number one, start with a component. Make a component. You'll thank yourself later if you want to make a joint, for example. Next, we need to talk about sketches. They are very important. If they break, everything breaks in your model. Make the base sketch that you reference from outside the component you just made and label those dang sketches right away so they don't get confusing. A big secret of parametrics is to work in symmetry. Only draw half of a thing and use mirror when possible. It's just one less thing that can break and you can use parameters to just divide that, say, width in half if you wanted to drive the full width. This is a pretty classic example of symmetry with a line mirrored about, but also think of symmetry in regards to planes, which is coming up later. All right, we made it. The walkthrough example. Okay, pause now, click the blog post link below, and download the parameter walkthrough file to follow along. Head back and resume the video when you're ready. 346 minutes later. All right, you're back. First, let's make a sketch. Select that front face. And we're gonna draw a temporary box here just to hold a place in the sketch. I like to get the name of the sketch out of the way so we know what it is. Uh, we also wanna create a component right away. Rule number one, remember? 
All right, at this point, definitely save. And let's jump into the parameters. Uh, we want to set our width, uh, something like 48 inches. Depth, and notice no units there, do 23. Height, 32. Apply, set 0.72. Let's jump back into the sketch. Let's apply the parameter to the top, which is width. Notice how you have to type times one inch. That's how you get around the unitless problem in the parameter. Uh, the one to the left is gonna be height. Same thing. Let's do an offset of this whole border here. Type the ply dimension times one inch again. So for any of you that were taught to clean up your drawings and have extra lines in them, this is gonna seem pretty funny. So here we are using the line command and drawing purposely messy corners. Uh, you'll see why in a bit, but essentially that's gonna allow us to easily make dados. Uh, this is a pretty big feature in making uh, good parametric drawings because typically you wanna kind of leave all the data you can there so nothing drops when things stretch. It looks funny, but it works pretty well. Let's do one more offset. Uh, of the outside border, and we'll just do ply divided by two, which is essentially the dado depth we want to use. We'll offset this outside line, and that'll be what we use for our dividers across the center. Again, ply divided by two. Make sure it goes out. All right, let's make two more parameters. Open parameters, add a parameter, no units, call it bays with three, and another one called bay width no units again, and we want that to be width divided by bays, so it's actually gonna calculate the width for us. Let's go back to the sketch. This is where it's gonna get a little exciting. So we're gonna use a pattern, a rectangular pattern, select the outside line and the one that's roughly uh, halfway through, so essentially centered about the outside line. Uh, select the direction to go left and right, type bays, which is our parameter, and then bay width times one. And actually you need to make it negative, and that's gonna pop over the dividers in the center there. Let's finish this sketch, and now we can get back into that component we made earlier. So let's rename that to be case, and we're gonna need to activate that. Extrude. Oh, we have a little snafu. All right, back to sketch real quick. We need to draw a line going up there, otherwise we're gonna have a funky looking piece. Probably the same at the bottom, yep, right there. Oh, we got some over here too. All right, finish off that bottom one, and we need to do one on the top right. Finish the sketch, activate the case component, extrude, and we wanna select all these pieces on the left of the sketch that will make up our left side. In distance, let's type our parameter depth times one inch. Back to the main component. Let's do an offset plane. We'll pick this outside face and we'll type width divided by two and make sure it's going the other way. So put a negative. That's gonna give us a mirror plane later. Let's rename that to mid. Notice how I made it in the main component and not in the case component. Let's activate the case component and extrude the bottom plane here. Select all of these little pieces, we'll speed it up a bit. Make sure and select all of them. And type depth times one. And make sure you're not doing a join here, but a new body. Time for a new component. Right click on the top of the new component here and type new component. Name that dividers, and it'll automatically be activated. We'll extrude, select this vertical portion, including the little dado. Type depth again, times one inch. That should automatically be a new body since it's a new component. Let's go back to the main component. We're gonna modify and combine. I'm gonna turn off the sketch though. Uh, we're gonna select the first, which is the bottom, and the second, which is the divider, and we're gonna do a cut with keep tools. That's gonna cut our divider out and make a dado. Hide that with V. Do a rectangular pattern. And here we're gonna select features and you can actually select the dado and that's a feature you can pattern. We're gonna do spacings, which is bays minus one. 
which is important. And then in distance, we will use bay width times one. We're gonna make that negative. And then at the bottom here, we're gonna tick optimized. And we have the start of a parametric data system. Let's do an offset plane. We'll select the bottom face of the case. Let's do height divided by two and make sure that goes up again. Let's rename the plane mid height and let's do a mirror. This is where we'll finally get to see things happen. So select bodies, select the left side and the mirror plane in the middle going vertical. We get one straight across, do the same thing. Oop, selected the wrong thing there. Middle and look at that, we now have a case. Let's turn back on that divider body and we're on to the last step. So roll back a little bit here. Let's go to a pattern. We want features again. Select your divider. We want bays minus one and then bay width times an inch. We make it negative. Do optimized and roll all the way to the right and we have a finished model. And now the payoff, we can play with the parameters and get this thing to do just about any adjustment we'd like. So we can go all the way up to 72 inches wide and make it four dividers or five or six or seven. And it should subdivide that equally. So you can get pretty big. I think at some point you do break it. If you wanna take it to the next level, I made a more advanced version that has essentially if then statements, even though you can't technically do that. Uh, it uses max and min and ceiling and floor to look at the, the width of each divider. And if it's between the minimum of say 13 inches and the maximum of 26, it will see those things before it chooses to resubdivide. That way you don't get really silly widths in terms of your drawer widths. Um, we'd want those to be in a fairly standard size. So we can also do things like choose how many pre-drilled case screws there are by just changing this parameter right here. From three to five, we get five and that goes all the way around the case, putting the dividers. There are dog bones built in and we can change the toe kick. We can choose how many pegs, adjustable pegs are on the inside and what their spacing are. And all of that is totally parametric, which is pretty fantastic to me. As you can tell, I find these kinds of projects fascinating and end up working on making these videos in my own time. If you find them helpful, a thumbs up would be great. If you want more of these videos, subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments.